Hello everyone and welcome back to Jackal Educational Channel. So this is the part 11 Marks Booster series for the GATE Environmental Science and Engineering and this is the very important lesson in which we are going to discuss some of the important concepts taken from the sample paper of GATE Environmental Science and Engineering. So if you haven't checked the previous parts, so you can check the link given in the description below. So let's start with the first question. So the first question is a peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids. So that is the concept but it is asking it is formed by the reaction of the dash part of one amino acid with the dash part of the other amino acid. So you should look into all these options carefully then I will reveal the answer. And here the correct option will be option number C. Yes, one of the amino groups H part that is the hydrogen part attaches to the hydroxyl part of the carboxyl group of another amino acid. So what is this? We will know from this picture. So this is one amino acid and this is the second amino acid. So here as you can see this terminal that is where there is the amino group is attached it is called as N terminus and when there is carboxyl group it is called as C terminus that is carbon terminus. You can see here it is carbon here. So as a result what happens is in both the amino acid there are N terminus and C terminus. So the N terminus part of one amino acid attaches with the C terminus part of the other. So as you can see this OH part of the carboxyl group attaches to the hydrogen part of the amino group. So as you can see so after that what happens is it forms the peptide bond as you can see here this is marked here as peptide bond so two amino acids are joined. So what happens is when these two are joined that is OH of one amino acid and H from the other amino acid that means H2O is released. So water means H2O. So when these two things are joined it is released in the form of water and then two amino acids are joined with the help of peptide bond. So this is the basic of the amino group amino acid and peptide bond. So let's move to the next question. The next question is coming up which of the following is true with respect to a three-way catalytic converter which is used for controlling the gaseous exhaust emissions in automobiles. So read every option carefully. And here the correct option will be option number B. Yes, the three-way catalytic converter oxidizes the carbon monoxide and it reduces the NOx gas. So as you can see here in this picture it is very beautifully explained. So here you can see oxygen, NOx and carbon monoxide as well as hydrocarbons are entering to the three-way catalytic converter and they are formed from the NOx to nitrogen as you can see. So NOx is converted into nitrogen and this step is called the reduction process. So it is reduced to nitrogen. Similarly, the carbon monoxide is oxidized. So oxidized means one oxygen is added. So here addition of oxygen converts the carbon monoxide that is the harmful gas to the carbon dioxide which is less harmful. And in this process also water is released and you can see here, here the catalytic converter is made up of Al2O3 layer. So Al2O3 is what? Al2O3 means alumina or aluminium oxide it is called as and here what are the elements which are combinedly with the alumina? They are palladium or platinum and here also you can see here rhodium is also used. So these are important, kindly note it down. So here in this slide we will know the basic difference between the two-way catalytic converter and three-way catalytic converter. So mostly nowadays in vehicles three-way catalytic converter are used but in some vehicles till now two-way catalytic converter are used. So what is the main difference is that here in two-way catalytic converter it oxidizes the carbon monoxide as we have seen in the previous slide to form carbon dioxide which is less polluting less harmful and it also oxidizes unburnt hydrocarbons to carbon dioxide and water. So these two things are seen in catalytic converter but in three-way catalytic converter so what it does is it reduces the nitrogen oxide. So NOx we have seen to nitrogen and oxygen and the same reaction as in two-way converter. That means these two steps are also done in the catalytic converter and additionally one more step that is nitrogen oxide is reduced to the nitrogen in this three-way catalytic converter. So this is the basic difference. Here three things happen, these two along with the nitrogen conversion, but here only two things are happening in the two-way catalytic converter. So let's move to the next question. So the next question is, which of the following measures can be used for reducing the road traffic noise? 
and the options are use of noise barriers, limiting the speed of vehicles or alteration of the road surface. And here the correct option will be all of the above. Yes, these three things can be used for reducing the road traffic noise. So most of you will be confused how these things are used for controlling the noise of the traffic. So you can see as per the noise pollution control rule, what are the measures to reduce the road traffic noise? So these are very important, kindly note it down by using the quieter vehicles. So those vehicles which are running on the battery, they are quieter vehicles for example. Next is using quieter tires. So quieter tires means good tires which are not making much noise, they are quieter tires. So that will also reduce the traffic noise. Next is traffic measures, that means speed reduction which is also given in the option. So that is also reducing the traffic noise using noise barriers home insulation also reduces the traffic noise. So if our home is insulated, then the traffic noise is also reduced. So these are important. And in next slide, we will see what are the things or when the things are taken. That means when it is noise standards are reassessed. That means the noise standards are again, they are measured when, when a new road is built, when new homes are built, an existing road is altered. So any changes in the existing road is altered. Then also we should go for the reassessment of the noise standard of that area. Similarly, the amount of traffic on a road if it increases, then also the government should go for the noise standards reassessing and then they will be taking certain measures to reduce them. So these four are the condition when there needs to be reassessment of noise standards. So let's move to the next question. Next question is a chocolate question. I hope you all will be able to answer. The question is, which of the following are considered as criteria air pollutants? So read every option carefully because they are very confusing. And here, the correct option will be option number C. Yes, ozone, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and particulate matter of less than 10 are considered to be the part of criteria air pollutants. So to know more briefly, we'll discuss what are these criteria air pollutants. So actually from the term itself, you should know that there are certain criteria set for these air pollutants. Why? Because these are the air pollutants, which are the indicators of the general air quality. So the regulations or standards are based on the criteria that related to the health or the environmental effects. So there are certain limits that this much should be the amount of these, these, these gases in the atmosphere because they can cause the health issue, environmental effects and they are generally treated as the air quality indicators of any area. So what are these? So you should know they are ground level ozone, carbon monoxide, particulate matter both 2.5 and 10 as well as lead nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. So here there is no chance of carbon dioxide. So it is not considered as the criteria air pollutant. Don't get confused. It is not under the criteria air pollutants. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is India's energy needs are heavily dependent on the coal based thermal power plants. So this is important which are also one of the most polluting sources. Yes, these coal based thermal power plants are one of the most polluting sources and it is asking that which of the following is the most dominant air pollutant that these power plants emit. So you should answer it very carefully. It is also a very easy question. I hope you will answer. And here the correct option will be option number B. Yes. As from the term, you should know that it is coal based. So coal are having the higher percentage of sulfur. So sulfur dioxide will be emitted when these thermal power plants are working. So this is the most dominant air pollutants which is released from the power plants which are running from the coal based thermal power plants. So this is very, very harmful for the atmosphere. So these were some of the questions which we discussed in this video. And if you haven't checked the previous lessons, as I have said, you can check the link given in the description below. So all the best for the examination, believe in yourself and rest leave everything on God. See you guys in our next video.